Welcome to a, another installment of the RMC 260 control panel in conjunction with the ATEM, um, all brands, of all types of ATEMs. Um, in this situation I'm just showing you the ATEM, ATEM TVS HD. And um, in this particular video I'm going to quickly, very quickly, if I can do it, show you using the DSK button on the control on the RMC 260 control panel. Now just first of all I want to just set up by explaining that this control panel has got two sets of um, key controllers being key one, key two, DSK. We don't normally have that with an ATEM. In fact if you, if you have a look at the ATEM control panel it's that's all the buttons you get with your downstream keys. So the functionality is a little bit different, but you'll understand it once we um, get into it. But very quickly, um, there's only one DSK button, um, and these are configurable to be controlling either DSK1 or DSK2 on the ATEM. I, um, uh, I'll show you that in a moment. Um, but I've currently got this in default mode, which is, will control DSK1. And um, if you uh, push the button, you'll see it uh, comes on. Um, and then up there, you can see there's the graphic. I'll push it again. It'll go off. I'll push it again. you see it's fading on and fading off. Um, if you use it in conjunction with the shift button, which I won't go into at the moment, but it's in the user's guide, the description of a shift button. Uh, you can actually turn it, tell it to cut on and cut off. I'll see if I can reach my hands out here. There's my little controller. The very end button is my shift button. I don't seem to be able to get it well balanced here, but anyhow, <coughs> um, I'll just hold my finger on the shift button and press the DSK. You'll see it'll come on now. The effect is it cuts on, cuts off. So that's using the shift function in conjunction with the DSK button. If I take my finger off the shift button, give my hand a rest now and you will see it fades on, fades off. Now you probably noticed when you're looking at the panel and I push the button you'll see it momentarily flashes. Um, what the flashing means is it's actually in the fade in mid transition. So if I just get up here and quickly go to, uh, where am I down here, just downstream keys. If I just change the rate of that to something a bit longer, say five seconds, means as it fades on and fades off, it's going to take five seconds, uh, which means that you'll see this thing will flash a lot longer, five seconds, because it's in that five second fading on and fading off position. End of five seconds, it'll go off. Hit the button again, fading on, fading on, fading on, and once it's faded on, the button light stays on, and as you can see. The super the downstream key supers on. Um, just very quickly, um, all these controls that you see here, um, these are all will very shortly. Well, let's just say shortly, will all be controlled from the RMC panel. Um, that will be achieved by using these two scrolling knobs here. One's enter. I can't remember what they are. Oh, it's menu. Selects the menu, and that it does the enter. <coughs> and um, it will display all the, the values as you're adjusting it will be displayed on here if you don't have the version 2 panel which is which has got these controls and doesn't have any there at all you'll see it on the telnet connection which um, let's just see if I've got it open here but you've seen enough of the telnet connection somewhere <coughs> sorry I just had a drink of water and it went down the wrong way um, I'm just looking here for the telnet connection maybe that's one yeah so there's the telnet connection. So as you're doing the adjustments, you'll also see the values changing um, as you're adjusting up here on this screen here. Um, I'm rushing through this. What I wanted to uh, also show you um, here is, as you can see, I've got the DSK uh, turned on. That's actually set to DSK1. Um, we'll go in the configuration menu in a moment and show you how to change that. I'm just going to take that off um, and it's fading off. Flash, 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 flash. So that's the program row. That's the program row um, DS key button. A totally different 
function to the preview row DSK function. Now the logic behind this button is that if this is your preview row, then on your preview monitor, as I change sources on the preview monitor, um, you'll see it changing to the various sources. Um, so a DSK button on a preview row means that you want to preview your DSK. Now the way you normally do that on an ATEM um, is you hit the tie button, which is up here. So I can hit the tie button and um, as I come around to show you the screen you'll see it's actually put giving you a preview of that graphic or of the DSK on your preview row. Now that's what we want. And you guessed it, that's what this button does. You see, now that I've turned it on, on the software control panel, I'll just go over there with my mouse and you can see I'm turning on and off. So that sort of shows you that the um, the actual panel here is, is reading what the ATEM is doing. It's not guessing what it's doing. Even if I do the, turn it on, on air, you'll see that on air comes on. If I do the fade, you'll see it's fading on. And this is me just controlling it all. On, on here so all these indicators on here are showing you the actual in indicators that's on the ATEM so if you've got another panel connected it will follow whatever's going on. Um, I went off the rails there again so um, with the tie button you'll see there's no fat fading or anything it's all it does is it turns on the, DS the selected DSK on the preview row so as I'm turning it on and off here you can see it this is on the software control panel uh, and then if I go down to the um, same button on the RMC you see I'm turning it on, turning it off, you see the LEDs following up here, turning on, turning off, following and off we go. So um, that's basically the operation of the two buttons. Um, it's all in the user guide. I'm trying to keep the user guide updated as I do these software releases. Um, but finally, I'm just going to finish off on quickly how you can set um, the which DSK these buttons will control. So you you can either control DSK1 or DSK2. Um, so as all we do is again we go to our, our control box, we press. So we're going to change hands. Here we go. We press the, the button to go into config mode. We scroll down to where it says, um, uh, what's it called, Active DSK. So once we get to Active DSK, we push the button and it shows you that we're currently using DSK1. So if I just wanted to do that to check to see what DSK I've selected, that's all I need to do. I can then long press the button and nothing's changed. And I know now that the Active DSK is number one. If we want to change the value, again, we push the button and we just turn the knob. So you can't turn anywhere past two because that's there's only two DSKs. So now that I've done that, I can then hit the button once and hit the button long to get out of there. Now we're back to normal operation and now you'll see if I um, push the, um, the DSK uh, button, it'll actually show you, you see that's DSK1, but because I've told it to be DSK2 now, you'll see that it fades on DSK2, which is a different graphic. And um, we can fade it off. And again, we can cut it on, cut it off using the shift key. Um, that fades set to five, uh, 10 seconds, I think. Um, yeah, and so that's that's basically uh, how quick it is. You, you can change between DSK1 and DSK2. One other thing that I have done, I did in the last software release, but I forgot to release a video on it. I won't go into it too much here. You can play a play or read the, read the user's guide. Uh, I actually added um, the ability to change the white pattern because on the RMC, you've only actually got uh, one, two, what have we got? Six, six white buttons. Um, they've actually pre labeled them, whatever they are, but ignore that. But these are. Um, pattern 1, Pattern 2, Pattern 3, Pattern 4, Pattern 5, Pattern 6 and you can program them to be any um, of the patterns that are available and let's just go up to here again so any of these patterns you can program any of those buttons to be any of those patterns so I think there's 18 patterns there but there's only 6 buttons on the panel so whatever your favourite 6 patterns are you can um, <laughs> you can program them to all these buttons here and you can do that in the config um, here and this is all done graphically so if I just now click um, 
uh, we can now see these are the user buttons. So as I turn um, the selection knob, um, I've got to change hands here again. <coughs> um, you can see it. I can change. I can select any one of the six user buttons, and you can see that um, um, over here it tells you the pattern number, and then it gives you a little bit of a graphical display um, of what um, what the current pattern is, and if you've got the setting on for display on preview monitor. It will show you. It will show you on on the preview monitor. You actually see the pattern a little bit there, but um, it's got to come in a bit further. But as I'm turning, turning the rotary knob, uh, you can actually see it sh also showing the patterns that I've got selected up here. Uh, and of course, if I then want to change a pattern, say use a six, which is what I'm on there now. If you use a six. It's just you push the button, and then you can go through um, whatever pattern you want. You can see it's going stepping down one by one. And um, yeah, here's me just going down. So you can just select quickly, select whatever pattern you want on whatever button you've selected, and away you go. Once you're happy with that, so there's a diamond, diamond wipe. You can see on the preview row up here. This this is only for um, if you want a quick eyeball to make sure that you've got the the pattern that you, that you're after. Um, but once you're happy with that, I'm happy with the diamond wipe. I can just quickly quick push the button. Um, and um, I can then um, long push to come out of that and we're now back to normal and um, if I um, um, yeah, yeah that's it that's all we wanted to do so um, that's as about as quick as I can do it uh, as I said read the user's guide it's up to date with um, the latest um, stuff uh, I also mentioned in there this shift button that I have here. At the moment, I've just permanently can uh, permanently have it attached to one of the pins on the uh, Tally GPI connector. Um, but when I get a chance, I will make that programmable so that you can put uh, you can have up to I think it's five or six shift buttons, which uh, at the, currently we're only using shift number one. But um, that means you can expand stuff out to six different levels, but let's not get too involved. Um, talk to you in the next video.